To get my channel back on track as a channel about utility software from the past, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you a database utility I found, which is absolutely delightful, and which I didn't record an intro for, which is why I'm wearing a completely different shirt. It's a great program. I think you'll like this video a lot if you're into programs, and I think it shows a lot about what I like about the past and what I feel like we don't get anymore. Novel software developed by people who saw problems and decided to fix them, instead of people who invented problems in order to fix them. Poorly. All right, it looks like it completed, so maybe this was a single disk product. So let's run PCF. Ooh. See? This is a strange interface. It lets you type a name or a number or select the cursor keys. When you select it, it doesn't actually do anything. You have to press F10. All right, there we go. Nice. So what I think this is, is a pre-made DBase app. This is basically nothing more than a generic database management program for individuals who want to make their own databases for handling small business stuff or home stuff, but who couldn't figure out how to do DBase on their own. You know, how to define columns, how to da 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 da. So I think that's what this is. Let's go back and see if we quit this database and do different file, see, there's one here called Ask Jim, let's load that. Find a record, first record. Okay, so uh, each one of these appears to be a database field. So we've got one field called question, one called answer, one called note, one called see pages, and this is how they stored the documentation for this database program they stored it in the database's own format but the fact that these fields are not the same ones that were being used in the other database tells us that this is not just a simple card catalog this is something more free form so let's go back and see if we can make a new database can we make a new one yep okay there we go right so what this is is basically a this is a rapid database creation tool because DBase provided an excellent way to make a database back end but you had to write your own front end in DBase or you had to do everything using the super low level hardcore tools it was like running your own database by doing raw SQL commands it's not really tenable for your everyday mom and pop that just wants to store data on their computer so this thing is sort of like the visual basic of databases this sort of software was really common back in the day but this one looks better than most of the stuff that i usually saw so the first thing i notice is that there's two options here one is you provide names and links and it lays them out automatically so that means if you don't care what it looks like all you have to do is punch in a bunch of names and say yes 32 characters maximum 300 characters maximum and then it's just going to stack them up one after another and fit them to the screen Whereas the, the paint mode allows you to define the exact character heights and widths of each field and where they will go on the screen. Because as you noticed, when we were looking at the automobile da database, that had a non-linear UI where things were positioned in arbitrary locations, not just one after the other. So this allows you to do whichever you want, but both ways are still easier than making it from scratch. So let's do fast. Wow. This is fascinating let's get some words in here let's make a database for my floppy disks why not uh, so how do we categorize floppy disks uh, we need well I don't know if it automatically generates an ID for each record so I'm gonna be safe and put an ID field in there myself which I'll probably leave blank and then name um, can I do mixed case oh yeah I can name type that's gonna be either uh, five and a quarter or uh, three to three and a half works content which is gonna be whether it's an app a utility a driver or a game or an operating system location so which one of these boxes it's in and then a freeform notes field so I'm just gonna put these in a row like this it says put them in the relative positions so I'm guessing that the physical location on the screen doesn't matter this is just a list of this many potential fields so let's hit all H to find out for sure. Oh, I'm wrong. It says the columns are important. As you use more columns in any row, the maximum data width of any field. So if I were to put it here, it would literally put it on the screen right there. All right, so in that case, what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to put a field up here and I'm going to call that size. And that's where we'll store whether it's a 720K or 1.4 meg. All right, so every field is 1 to 65 characters. That's an interesting number, but okay. Uh, so that's going to be, I might get, I might get over a thousand discs. So let's make that four. Uh, the name, what is the longest disc name that I have in here? Cough history questionnaire is pretty long. Norton antivirus emergency boot disc. Ooh, Gold Hill software, Edna's cookbook number 119. That's like 35 odd characters. So I'm just going to make this the maximum length, 65. Okay number, character, or uh, that'll be character as well. Okay. How many positions to the right of the desk? Whoa. I pressed down and I got here. Okay. Um, are any of the fields window fields? Yeah, the notes field. So which field is a window field? It looks like it's only going to let me have one, which makes sense. And again, I have to press F10 to accept. Oh, no, okay. If I don't select one, uh, then it continues on to the other screen. But if I select another one, then it'll make another window field. All right. Looks good. Index field. Um, that's going to be the ID field. And I have to actually type in X. I can't press spacebar or anything. I have to actually type in the letter X. All right. Mm, call it that. Sending. I should have made it descending. All right, there we are. It's interesting. This has fewer options than the other databases did, which suggests there's more I can do. So let's go put a record in. ID one. Name is Ford Art. Type is data. Yes. Um, I've already forgotten what the content field was for, so I'm going to leave it blank. Disk box one. All right. All right. And then size, uh, that is a 1.44 meg. Okay. F10. Yes. All right. And that takes me to a new record. Let's go back. Ah, there we go. If there's no data in the database, then it doesn't show you any of the other options. Let's do a find record. And there it is. Add, delete, modify, search new. It's a new feature. And then you can just navigate next record, prior record. Of course, there aren't any. All right, graphs, totals. Oh, well, I'm not sure where it put that. It must have saved it somewhere. Letter writing. Ah, okay. I'm fairly certain this is a mail merge, something that's going to spit out a whole bunch of duplicate letters by replacing variables with the contents of the database. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to go read the help file, but I promise you that's what it is. Ports, uh, which I'm going to go run on the database that actually has data in it. All right, so then this lets you modify the names of the fields, it looks like. So you can't modify the database once it's created. You can only modify the labels of the fields. Uh, you can change the description. Uh, you can change some data about the fields, but you can't change the location or the order of them. And it's got an option for easily making a duplicate of the database, modifying it on the fly. And then what can we export to? Oh, cool. Oh, mail merge format. Neat. Wow, that's a bunch of formats. Well, let's spit out the mail merge. Yes. 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 Okay, this will help us find duplicates, and that checks based on the index field. Ah, no, okay, you get to choose the field you want to compare on. Terrific. And then smart keys, that's for sh making shortcuts to the different sections, it looks like. All right, so then let's go back and look at a different file. Let's go back to people, and I'm going to run a report. Mailing labels, sure. Output to screen, one copy, and go. And there they are. Okay, and then letter writing. Let's see what that looks like. Yep, there we go. 
So basically, um, what this is going to do is for every entry in the database, it's going to take the date field and put it here. It's going to, or no, I'm sorry, this puts the current date, not the field for the database. My apologies. Um, but it substitutes this is a database field, that's a database field. So for each database record that it goes through, it's going to replace each of these variables with that value. Um, it looks like this group, e group, that appears to be for uh, probably uh, like screen formatting. It's going to affect how it how it spits it out to the file to be printed or out to the printer. Um, you, you can see what this does. You know, it's for making those automated letters that you get that weren't written by a human but look like they are because they address you directly. So that's cool. And then down here, it reminds you, it shows you the different database fields and how wide they could be. Now that's critical because if you didn't know how wide the field could be, you might try to put multiple fields side by side and then it would end up either wrapping or throwing away some of the data. So that's a critical reference to have. This is a fantastic use of screen space. Like look at all the data they've packed on here. It looks a little messy at first, but let's keep in mind that someone who's working on this is a professional. Like, yes, this software is not designed for database nerds, but it is designed for someone whose job it is to do this. So a secretary or even like an accountant or somebody might have been doing this, not like, you know, Joe Q. This, this isn't for nobody, you know. So at first, this might be a little intimidating, but look at how many things were afforded here. Um, it provides a list, a reference list of commands you could use. Uh, it provides all the information about the database that you could possibly want. Uh, other than the type of field, and you'll probably be able to tell that. Um, we've got the current location we are in the document. This is a terrific layout. I really like this. There's a menu. I wonder what that does. Oh, terrific. It even has marking, although I don't know how to use it. Okay, here we go. So, depending on whether you use angle brackets or square brackets, it will strip blanks from the data. I wonder if that does it at the beginning and end or throughout it. Uh, and then uh, key in. Oh, that's fascinating. I know what that does. If you populate this field, if you put that in there, then I think when you go to print this, it's going to ask you either one time or once per record, I'm not sure which, to put in some custom data. So suppose that you were going to send a letter to your entire customer mailing list that said, you know, what car was on sale this month. And the only thing that changes about the letter is the car. Everything else stays the same. So that way, your secretary or whoever could go in here, hit print, and then one time type in 1994 Ford Taurus, and then it's going to make the same letter as every other time and only replace that one field. But they won't have to come in here and actually edit the template. So that means there's no chance for them to screw up the entire template, and they also don't have to go in there, dig through it, and find out where in potentially a very long letter uh, the variable field they're supposed to edit is. That's terrific. And then form feed obviously skips you down to the next page on the printer. So if you wanted to save paper and you weren't worried about making these full size, suppose you were flyering an entire college dorm, for instance, and you didn't need to be professional about it, you could set this up to print a mail merge that would make something maybe this tall, print it out with no space at the beginning and end on a line printer, and then you'd get, instead of this much text on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, you would get three or four letters crammed onto the same one, and then you could just gang cut them on a guillotine slicer and then go around the dorm sticking them on everyone's doors. All fantastic features. I wanna put something in here so we can try out this key in feature. It looks like we have to put a dot in front of it. Oh, that's, oh, that's very strange. Okay, so this is very odd. Uh, they've actually inverted the meaning of the cursor here. So if I arrow back here and type over the top, it'll just erase that. But if I go back and press insert, the cursor changes, and then it will insert instead of overwriting. The problem is that in every other piece of software I've ever used, this meant insert and this meant overwrite. So I don't know why they chose to do this. Now, the other thing I'm confused about is it says in the help file here, key in star message, but up here it doesn't. I don't know why that is. So let's just run it and see what we get. So now we want to output to screen and F10. All right, so it's saying press enter for more. So this is the first letter. You can see it's populated all the data for the database. There we go. And now it wants to be, ah, that's what it is. So it's key in, and then whatever comes after key in is the prompt that it will display here. So you can put a bunch of different key in prompts in there, and the secretary will have to remember the order in which they're entered. 
and you do have to enter it for each one. So I was wrong in that, no, it's not that the secretary doesn't have to edit the template for mail merges that are identical. However, it means instead the secretary is able to edit the mail merge on a per letter basis. Okay, so uh, suppose your database was a whole bunch of custom records and your accountant had just tallied up everyone's bills and figured out what they owe, but that billing information isn't actually in this database, right? But they've got a list of records that's got what everybody owes on it. Okay, so when they go through and print all the bills, they could just type key in for each one what that person owes. So that's a little hokey, but you get the point, right? It allows you to enter customer specific data. I wonder how this would work if you were printing instead of displaying it on the screen. So that was Buttonware PC File 5.0, and that was from 1990, and it looks like he'd been developing it for eight years. First copyright dates in 1982. Jim Button. I might look him up, see if he's still around. Guy did great work. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I got a crap load of floppies a while back, about 500 of them off of eBay, and there's a ton of utility software in there, which I've been slowly going through. So in the near future, I'll be putting up more videos about utilities and fewer about games. However, keep your eyes peeled for my next video, which is about more interesting old hardware. Thanks, take it easy.